Hey, and welcome to the IIA's Increase Your Chances of Passing the CIA Exam webinar. My name is Kelly Quinn, and I will be your host for today's broadcast. Just a few housekeeping notes before we begin. If you experience any technical issues at any point today, please press the F5 key on your PC keyboard or the refresh keys on your Mac to refresh your console. That will typically resolve most issues. It's also recommended that you close out any other programs on your computer, such as your email, to ensure that you have the maximum bandwidth available to view the program. If you continue to experiencing any challenges, please do send us a message using the help widget for technical assistance and we will work with you in the background. We will be taking questions at the conclusion if time permits, so please feel free to submit your questions at any time throughout the webinar using the Q&A widget. With that, I am going to turn it over to our first presenter, Greg Van Choik. Hello, everybody. Thank you so much uh, for the nice introduction, Kelly. Uh, like you said, my name is Greg Van Choik. Um, today, we're going to cover a couple of different things, the Certified Internal Auditor Certification Program, Exam Overview, how to prepare for the particular examination using the CI learning system, study tips and test taking, and then links and resources. And like you said, we're going to finish out with uh, questions. Uh, like you said, my name is Greg Van Choik. I am a senior director in the certification department here at the IIA Global Headquarters. And today we're going to really be talking about the CIA and focusing on the CIA. This is the only globally recognized designation for internal auditors. And there are over 185,000 CIAs awarded around the world, and we are growing every day. So what are some of the benefits of earning your uh, certified internal audited credential? It helps you earn credibility and respect in your field. It provides more opportunities for advancement. Increases earning potential as much as 51%. Now, this does vary according to where you are based in the world, but this, this information is based off of a survey we did uh, in 2017, uh, and it's based on U.S. United States responses. It proves your willingness to invest in your own development. A lot of individuals say they want to raise the bar of their internal audit and their career development, so this is an excellent way to do that. And it also demonstrates by committing to your profession, by joining this family of 185,000 CIAs globally. It also improves your internal audit skills and knowledge as you learn about internal audit, the standards, and so forth. It also builds confidence in your knowledge for the profession. All these slides will be available post-event, so you don't have to memorize a lot of this other stuff. Um, I will have some links as well as QR codes um, as we go through the slides. Um, so if you want to refer back to a lot of this information, you'll have that available. If you have your phone available, you can always uh, click on the QR code to go to the link directly. This particular slide talks about eligibility requirements for the CIA program, and it's really kind of separated by two individual, uh, individual sections, the entry requirements and the exit requirements. The entry requirements we're going to focus on is indiv things that you need to do in order to enter into the program. Three main items, education, government-issued ID, and experience. In some cases, the experience is actually an exit requirement, but that depends on the level of education you have. Then we have exit requirements, which is three examinations you must pass. And then, of course, you must meet the experience requirement. So let's take, for example, I have a bachelor's degree or equivalent. Then I have to enter the program. I have to submit evidence of my education, either a transcript or a degree, a government-issued ID, such as a passport. And in this particular case, exit requirement for experience. So I don't need to worry about the experience piece to start the examinations. I can take the exams in any order I like, um, but there are exam part one, two, and three. And then, of course, by the end of my program to obtain the CIA, I would need two years of internal audit experience. So we get a lot of questions about what constitutes internal audit experience. On the right-hand side of the slide, you'll see a couple of bullets. We're pretty generic in what does qualify for work experience. And I'm not going to read all of them there, but if they're in, in any of these general categories, they will be accepted for uh, work experience. In some parts of the world, um, there are different educational systems. So, for example, you have A-level um, or equivalent and so forth. We just ask that you work through an educational um, equivalent service that matches it to either a bachelor's degree, a master's degree, or so forth. 
So there's just some of this information. There's a link here available to the website so you can read more in-depth information about how to enter the particular program. We have a polling question coming up next, a little bit interactivity. And the question is, have you already applied for the CIA certification program? Yes or no? We'll just take a little bit to, for you to answer this particular survey question. And then when we come back, uh, we'll look, uh, talk about the results. So I'll give you just about 30 seconds or so to answer this. So things are still coming in. Just going to give it just a little bit more time as people answer. Okay, it's about another 10 seconds, and we'll go ahead and advance the slide. Okay, so you should be seeing the results. It's about, I would say, almost a 50-50 split for those who have applied and those who have not. So those who have applied, you'll get some really good study tips uh, using the learning system here by my colleague, Vicki. For those who have not applied, um, I definitely recommend reading the certification handbook from everything from front to back page. It has a lot of great information on there. Same thing if you are enrolled in the program, it's also a very good resource to understand the policies and procedures uh, for the CIA program. So what is the cost? And the certification process, uh, we refer to a lot of CCMS, which is the Certification Candidate Management System. And you will do all of your information um, and management of the credential through CCMS. You can also ask questions, and in a few days we'll respond to those particular questions and help you through your certification journey. There's also a lot of great resources, um, such as practice questions, information about the learning system, and websites that can lead you uh, to more information. You'll then pay the application fee. It is based on member or non-member. So this is if you are a member or non-member of the IIA. Anyone in the world can be a member. Um, you don't have to be enrolled in a credential, but you are. Um, you do get some membership discounts and other benefits, such as access to the IPPF and standards. So these prices are in U.S. dollars, um, and you can kind of see the breakout here. And then finally, you'll just upload your government-issued ID, uh, and that is such as a passport or a driver's license issued by your government. That will be approved, and then you can go ahead and register for the examination. Certification process we can just kind of put into three easy steps. First one is you complete the application at the very bottom here looking at kind of the teal color. Uh, you'll complete the application requirements, submit your documentation. You must do that within 90 days of starting that application. Um, otherwise, you'll have to start all over again, so we just recommend you do it within 90 days of starting the process. It's usually pretty quick and easy. You'll pay for the application, and then you are approved into the program where you can then uh, register for one of the examinations. You can take the exams in any order that you like. And the exam scoring is what we call scaled scoring. The scoring is from 250 to 750 points, and you need 600 points or higher to pass. What scaled scoring means is not every question has the same amount of weight. So there may be some unscored items, scored items, and the weight of the scored items may vary. So that means if, let's say, for example, you take a, uh, an examination worth 10 questions, you have to get 80, 8 out of 10 correct to be 80%. That's not the case because each question has different weight. Uh, lastly, to become certified, you have to maintain that designation. So you'll, you get your, once you get your experience and your education, you get certified, you then make sure you maintain that designation annually. Another question coming up, uh, when you're planning to take the CIA exam part, so you can answer A, B, or C within the next six months, within the next 12 months, or I have not yet decided yet. So give everybody about 30 seconds to go ahead and submit your answers to the question. So just make sure you select one of those items. And this will give us a better gauge of kind of when you're looking to take your particular examination. So you about 50% of attendees have voted. Just give it about another 10 seconds or so to choose your answer. Okay, so let's take a look at the results. So we have about 50, 55% in the next six months, so relatively quickly. Within the next 12 months, about 9, 20%, and I have not decided 26%. 
I see a lot of questions before we move on to the next slide. I see a lot of questions asking about the new internal audit standards and how is that going to affect the CIA exam. So I'm going to answer that here. Um, what's going to happen is once the uh, IIA launches the new internal audit standards, that could potentially be at the end of this calendar year or early next year. Once those standards are released publicly as the final version, they go into effect 12 months from the published date. Okay, so you have 12 months before they actually go into effect. The CIA examination will also be, be will publish a transition plan of specific dates of when the content of the CIA exam will be updated to align with the new global standard. That will be, and it, it depends on language. The first language to be updated with the content will be in English. That will not be before March of 2025. So once again, once that global standard is published globally, either the end of this calendar year or potentially early next calendar year, we will also publish the transition information for the CIA exam. That will give you more finalized dates of when the new content will be aligned with the global standard. And so just wait till once that IPPF and global standard is released, you can also look for a transition period as well for the CIA exam. However, like I said, no earlier than March of 2025 for English. Other languages will follow probably within the next 12 months after English is updated. So this is the topic areas for the particular CIA exam as it is today, Part 1, 2, and 3. If you look at Part 1 and Part 2, it's really focusing on the IPPF and the global standards. Part 3 is more about business acumen, and a little bit more than 50% is on IT data security information. So this was a change that we did in 2019 because IT is dramatically changing throughout the, the world, and it's a very fast-paced industry. So the exam was updated then, and it will be updated again with the new global internal audit standards, not before March of 2025. So you can take these exams in any order you like. Some people often ask, oh, am I prepared to take the particular exam? And Vicki is going to talk a little bit more about that. But I really always focus individuals to look at the different topic areas of the examination uh, and make sure that you understand and have a good proficiency in each of these particular areas. The exam is also offered in a variety of different languages other than English. So if you decide to take your exam in one of these languages, that will be selected when you schedule your examination. So for example, if I want to take my examination in German, when I schedule my exam, I'll choose German. And then I will also always have the opportunity to do an English pop-up screen. So I can always look at the English version so that you can reference that if you like. Another question for us, which of the following certifications do you currently hold? Do you hold a chartered accountant or a CA, certified public accountant or a CPA, certified information systems auditor or a CISA designation, or D, none of the above? So I'll give a little bit about 30 seconds or so to answer this question, and then we'll look at the results. So I see the answers coming in. Let's give it just a couple more seconds here to give people a chance to answer. About 50% of the attendees. Okay, so we're just about there. We'll take a look at the results. So we have about 6 or 7% for chartered accountants. 11% who have a CPA, 6% who have a CISA, and majority or 76% have none of the above. So what I want to talk about real quickly for those individuals that have a specific chartered account, such as ACCA or other chartered account bodies, a CPA, for example, like a U.S. CPA or a Canadian CPA and a, and a few others, we have a program that's what's called the CIA Challenge Exam. This is also a brand new offer to individuals who have a CISA designation. 
and we'll talk about that in just a second, but this is an opportunity for you. It's not an easy path, but it most certainly is an expedited path to the CIA. The traditional CIA program has three parts. The challenge exam is a one-part exam. This one-part exam is for um, some qualified individuals. What, what this program is, is you have up to three years to apply it, to take and uh, get your CIA through this particular program. One exam registration is included with the application bundle. You also get a customized CIA challenge exam study guide for CPAs using the learning system, which includes 1,000 practice questions. It also allows you to access to the standards to help you prepare for the exam. And of course, there's a discount if you are an IIA member. So who's eligible for this particular program? You, can be a, you have to must be an active CPA or CA from one of the approved qualified accounting bodies. You can also be an active CISA holder. So some of the accounting bodies, there are about 19 of them, are ICAI, which is in India, ACCA, which is UK-based, CPA Canada and Canada, US CPA in the United States, and many more. So take a look at the QR code. This will give you to the landing page to talk a little bit more about this program. If you're interested or eligible for this program, you must apply into this program before the end of this September. Okay, so the application is only open for about a month and a half now. So you have to must apply if you're eligible to this program before the end of September. So that's this particular uh, information on the challenge exam. Another thing that we're also launching this year is changes to our CPE policy. Um, I have so included a QR code that land, goes to this landing page about changes to the CPE policy. There's always a lot of questions about the CPE, what qualifies, how many hours do you need. You will need 40 CPE hours annually to maintain your designations. Uh, and then, of course, there are some information um, about the changes and so forth. We won't go into details because um, this is really about preparing for the examination and entry requirements. But for those who have interest in the CPE, um, I highly recommend you visit the landing page using the QR code. So finally, where do you go if you have additional questions um, after this particular webinar? You can actually go to your CCMS profile under the Help tab and open up a new case, and we'll be happy to help you with those questions throughout your certification journey. So I'm going to be answering questions in the background of, um, using the Q&A function, uh, but I'll also turn it over to my colleague, Vicki, uh, to talk a little bit more about the CIA Learning System. Well, thanks very much, Greg. That was a very informative introduction to CIA certification. And for all of you who are interested in becoming a CIA, you know that this is a certification that is recognized all over the globe. It is portable all over the planet. And in terms of the new global internal audit standards coming out and the exam changing, uh, potentially in a little more than 18 or 19 months, I would encourage everybody on this call to start studying now and earn your CIA certification now. Don't wait as the world of business becomes more and more complex. Don't wait as our role in assurance and governance and risk management and providing that good assurance over internal controls don't wait until the complexities of business as we know it only increase. Don't wait until the internal audit standards change. You're all, if you've been practicing in our profession, then you're familiar with the current body of knowledge as we use it today. So my number one <laughs> test taking tip and study tip is don't procrastinate, okay? Uh, get it done, do it now. So this is me. I've been instructing CIA exam prep using the IIA CIA learning system for over 15 years. I have served in many different roles uh, as an IIA volunteer, including on the IIA's North American Board of Directors uh, at the local chapter level. I have, uh, curr I'm currently serving on the Global Nominating Committee as well as the uh, North American Nominating Committee for those boards of directors. So I'm a passionate advocate for our profession. I believe in what we do. And um, I just encourage you to earn this certification that is going to set you apart from other internal audit professionals 
who don't have the certification. So what about preparing for your exam? Well, I'm an advocate for the IIA CIA learning system. This uh, learning tool was established by the IIA to benefit you and help you be successful in your pursuit of your CIA certification. It aligns your professional knowledge and experience and your training with the curriculum. It allows you to develop a personalized study path based on your strengths and weaknesses. So you can assess where you are today and build your own personalized study strategy uh, that's going to help you be successful. It is built with micro learning segments. So you can focus on these smaller content segments. They give you estimated study time. So that is great for budgeting your time so you can make the most efficient use of your available time and make sure that at the end of your study time, you have a clear understanding of each topic. So if you just have five minutes while you're you know, waiting for a meeting, you can log into the system and do a little bit of work with one of these little micro-learning topics. The system itself gives you direct links embedded in the content to give you additional IIA guidance right to the standards and guidance uh, content on the IIA website. The materials are designed for your mobile devices, so you can download them to your e-readers and um, you know, go from there using your technology. And there's many different uh, delivery channels for you to take advantage of the curriculum. You can use a self-study approach. Uh, you can go to an instructor-led course, either virtually or in a live classroom. Uh, and there's also group training available for generally it's larger audit shops or audit shops within a particular geogra uh, geographic area that get together and pool their resources to bring in a live instructor. So lots of opportunities. Self-study, again, this is self-paced on your schedule. This is a great opportunity for you. Once you have done your assessment and you determine where you need the most help and the most study, then you can build your own customized uh, study strategy. Again, the instructor-led courses, these are available online. In fact, the IIA has an ongoing Part 3 course online that started yesterday. Uh, so you just go to the IIA.org and you can look in, the, uh, look in the Certifications tab and click on Certified Internal Auditor and then it will guide you to the course, courses that are available. There is a uh, Part 1 course. Uh, the first week of October, October 3rd through the 5th, that's about 12 hours of delivery. There's a Part 2 course starting in September, September 5th through the 7th. So check it out. That may be a benefit to you if you want to uh, invest in that learning opportunity. You should also know that you can take your exam in any order. If you're recently out of university and you're right on top of that business curriculum, you know, you're uh, very well uh, familiar, familiarized with the IT concepts and IT security, you might want to take part three first. You can take the exams in any order. So you're not, you know, you're not bound to taking one, two, and three uh, consecutively. Again, we have the opportunity for the corporate courses where uh, an instructor will specifically deliver the content for your internal audit uh, folks within your internal audit activity, um, either virtually or in a live classroom environment. So what are the steps to success? Remember, proper prior planning prevents poor performance, right? Those are the six Ps. Proper prior planning prevents poor performance. So the first step, assessment, is critical to your success. You'll get that understanding of where you're starting today, what's your baseline understanding of the various topics within the syllabus that Greg described on the different three parts. And then you'll study the content and the topics, and then you'll practice. So let's take a deeper dive into the assessment. The IIA-CIA learning system has an online pretest. 
that's going to help you establish what are my strengths, where are my weaknesses, and again, develop that personalized study strategy. So here you see on the screen that uh, this candidate, uh, you know, accomplished an overall score of 28% on the first initial topics here for the part one uh, exam. So you would take this uh, pretest and you would get a similar readout. And so this is going to give you direction on how you want to commit your time and invest your energy to be successful. The second step then is to study. You can follow the recommended study path based on your assessment and your pretest results, or you can follow the order of the syllabus and the exam topics beginning at the beginning right through the very end. And you can skip around. The point is you've got to have a plan. It's absolutely critical that you have a plan. It's also very important that you calendar your study time. And I'm going to say that many times throughout my talk uh, this afternoon. You've got to have a plan and you've got to calendar your study time and show up for your appointments just like you would any other important commitment. It's all about you. You're in charge. You're in charge of your career. You're in charge of your livelihood. You're in charge of, you know, your life. So calendar your study time and uh, show up and make it happen. Different options for how you're going to study. The order of the content or, you know, you can surf around within the content uh, depending on your strengths and weaknesses. The Curriculum is comprised of reading materials, just like a textbook that you would have in university. Um, so you can download the curriculum to your e-reader, or you can choose to purchase for a, a small fee. It really just covers the printing of the materials and the shipping. Uh, you can get the hard copy uh, textbooks if you'd like. Um, and you have the time estimates provided within the learning system for each individual study topic. So that's really helpful for budgeting your time and helping you to understand the duration that you're going to need to study. Are you going to be able to knock out part one in three or four weeks? Or is it going to take a more you know, extended period of time, maybe six to eight weeks for you to study and prepare for part one? It's largely dependent on your circumstance, you know, your commitments and your obligations to your family and your work and, you know, other volunteer activities and your recreation, whatever it is. So, uh, again, planning is critical. So study, you download the reading materials, then the learning system, uh, you know, it has these links built in. So this is fabulous. IIA members will be able to click on these links and go directly to the content on the IIA's website, directly to the standards and guidance. And this is going to give you a little bit of a deeper dive, um, you know, so that you get uh, a little broader coverage of each exam topic. Quizzes. So in the online tools and resources, you will go to learncia.com. And you will be able to uh, have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of questions at your disposal so that you can test your understanding and your knowledge of the various topics that you're studying. So this is a, a more practical application of what you've learned. It allows you to test your comprehension. You will get immediate feedback and also the rationale for why the correct answer is indeed the best answer and why the incorrect answers are not the best answer. And this is a challenge with the CIA examination. As audit professionals, we are responsible for following our standards and guidance that is recognized and embraced globally. We are also responsible for exercising judgment. And our judgment is predicated on our understanding of our business, our regulatory environment. We need to understand our organization's priorities, our organization's risks, our organization's strategic plans, our goals and objectives. 
We need to understand our market environment, impediments to accomplishing our strategies. We have a big role in our organization. So this is absolutely critical that we can exercise good judgment in delivering that assurance and advice to our stakeholders that rely on internal audit um, you know, for our professional perspective and our value proposition. So uh, the exam is built so that your job is to choose the best answer. You may see two answer choices that are correct, and you may struggle between the two. But your job is to exercise your knowledge of the standards and guidance first and exercise your good judgment within the context of the question. Okay? So this is one of the challenges with the CIA examination. These tests are not easy. Um, it re again, it requires understanding of the standards as well as the ability to exercise judgment. So the beauty of the learning system is that you get that feedback and you get the rationale that explains why the best answer is indeed the best answer and why the other answers are not the best answer. Another great tool is the flashcards, and this is found in the resources tab of the IIA's CIA learning system. The flashcards, uh, just like good old-fashioned flashcards when you were in, you know, primary school, uh, it gives you a term and it gives you a definition or an ex explanation. Um, and this is a tremendous help. This is a great help uh, in terms of reinforcing your knowledge and uh, recall of the standards. Another key element here is that the words matter, the specific words matter. And the glossary is gonna be very helpful to you in understanding our professional vocabulary and our semantics and how we use our language of internal auditing. So I encourage you to use the flashcards and the glossary you can augment the flashcards as you're reading your curriculum. You can take some of your thoughts, some, you know, maybe you're relating a particular uh, concept or topic to actual work that you've performed in your organization. So you can, uh, you know, jot down your notes on your flashcards and that's gonna help you with the recall of the terminology and the related definitions. We know that adult learners, um, learn and retain more information with multiple cho uh, touch points with information. So by reading the curriculum and then doing the quizzes online in the learning system and then reinforcing your understanding and memory of terminology and definitions with the flashcards and then augmenting the flashcards by actually writing down uh, either on your, your iPad or your e-reader, whatever, or on a piece of paper with the flashcards printed on paper. This gives you three or four different touch points with a particular topic or concept or uh, term. So this is a great way to reinforce your learning is by using these flashcards and the glossary. Study times, this is one of the most frequently asked questions with the IIA's um, CIA certification is how long am I gonna need to study? So the professionals who have developed the curriculum in, in tandem with the certification standards board, um, they're estimating about 40 hours for part one, 40 hours for part two, uh, 50 hours for part three. And these are minimums. These are minimum study requirements. I can give you my personal testimonial on my study experience. When I took my CIA exams, I was already about 20 years into my career. I'd had a very robust career experience. I had practiced public accounting in the state of California in the US, so I was already a licensed certified public accountant. Um, I'd done a lot of work in risk management in the financial services uh, industry. I had been a regulatory examiner. 
uh, with California State Banking. I had already uh, been a vice president of finance of a commercial bank. Um, and at the time that I took my exams, I was a VP of risk management for a, a community bank. Um, so I had a wealth of experience. I studied for part one and part two together. And the reason I did that, you might recall when Greg presented the syllabus and the syllabus topics. Part one exam is all about the foundations of governance, risk, and control, and fraud, as well as the attribute standards. The attribute standards are all about those standards that apply to internal audit professionals and internal audit activities within organizations and internal audit consulting groups, okay? Things like the requirement to have a charter, the requirement that we exercise independence and objectivity, that we have, you know, do professional care as top of mind, and then the quality assurance and improvement program. So those are attribute standards. They're attributes, characteristics, and qualities of internal audit activities and internal audit professionals and uh, consulting activities. Part two exam is all about doing the work. It's all about methodology, how we use a risk-based planning approach. We plan our work holistically over a period of time, multiple quarters or a year. We plan at the engagement level. We execute the plan. We actually do the test work. We form our conclusions using a risk-based perspective. And then we communicate the results of our work. And then we monitor for management's remediation. So part two is all about performing the work. That's why they're called the performance standards, okay? So part one and part two are very closely related. And for me, I studied for both parts together after taking a full day exam prep course in a live classroom for part one and a full day exam prep course in a live classroom for part two. And I took parts one and two on the same day and passed them both on my first attempt after studying for both parts for about 50 hours. Now part three, I was very intimidated by the IT topics, uh, largely because I'm a baby boomer. I wasn't born with a you know mobile phone in my hand uh, all of the technology was evolving, and I was very fearful of the technology topics. I was also very fearful of failing, almost to the point that I almost didn't uh, pursue my CIA certification, simply because I didn't want to fail. Okay, Most internal auditors are not oriented around failure or oriented around success getting it right, doing things correctly, right? Seems to be the way we're wired. Part three, I took a one-day study course in a live classroom, exam prep, and then I studied more like 80 or 90 hours for part three because I really wanted to master the IT and IT security topics, and I did pass my part three on the first attempt. So even though I already had all the financial management topics, wired, right? Because I was already a certified public accountant. You know, I had worked in accounting roles and very familiar with those topics. But uh, that's my personal experience. Your personal experience is going to be very different than mine. It's entirely dependent on your education, how recently you've come out of school, your work experience. It's going to be dependent on your ability to read and master and understand the content, your ability to take tests. Some people are just better at test taking than others. So it depends on a lot of variables in terms of your time commitment to being successful for your CIA certification and exam. Finally, in terms of the CIA learning system um, online tools and resources, we have a practice exam that emulates what you will experience in your Pearson View exam um, actual 
CIA test experience. So it's a timed practice exam that uh, the look and feel, the user interface, the screens look exactly like the Pearson View exam experience. You'll have the time clock clicking away in the bottom right-hand corner. Uh, you can see that this is two hours, 29 minutes, 36 seconds. So this candidate just started their part one exam. Uh, I think we mentioned that the part one exam, uh, you're allowed two and a half hours, so 150 minutes for your part one exam. And then parts two and three are just 100 multiple choice questions. And for parts two and three, you have two hours. So 120 minutes for your exam. So you'll see the time clock clicking away in the bottom right corner. You see the little uh, blue rectangle with the flag in it. You will be allowed to click on that flag to flag questions for later review so that when you've completed all of your exam questions, then you can go back to those that you have flagged and it's very likely that something in a subsequent exam question will trigger your memory and help you to uh, more accurately or you know, give you a little hint of information that's gonna trigger your memory so that you can get that question correct. Uh, you also see in the upper right-hand corner, question two of 125. So it's uh, you know, ticking away with the um, uh, the numbers of questions that you will have. And you can see that it allows you to go back and go forward. So again, the user, user interface is just like you'll experience on your actual exam. And after you have clicked the submit button and you get your score, then you can go back and review those questions that you answered incorrectly and get a better understanding of why the best answer is indeed the best answer. So here we have a practice question. We'll give you a few minutes for this. Uh, which of the following fraudulent entries is most likely to be made to conceal the theft of an asset? We'll give you about 30 seconds to answer the question. Okay, let's have a look. Here you see some key words, and this is absolutely critical. One of the number one test-taking tips is to read the question. Make sure that you see the qualifiers, like the language most likely, least likely, not likely, um, best, you know, which is the best strategy which is the least important, that type of thing. So looking for the keywords such as the qualifiers and then to conceal the theft of an asset. So here we have a fraud perpetrator who is trying to hide uh, through the books and records of the organization and the accounting information, trying to hide those assets that they've stolen. So here the best answer is to debit an expense account so the fraud perpetrator would be burying the uh, theft of the asset in a profit and loss account and then crediting the asset so that they're eliminating that asset from the books and records so it's no longer part of the asset section of the balance sheet, okay? So most fraud perpetrators would try to hide their theft by charging it through an expense account. Answer B, if the fraud perpetrator debited the asset, they would be increasing that asset's value and then crediting another asset account would have the effect of eliminating a different asset from the books. So that would really be a red flag to anybody who is reviewing the uh, journal entries or the accounting information. Um, because you would have an asset eliminated from the books that is still that still exists, 
and you would have the asset that was stolen, uh, perhaps with double its value. Uh, debiting a revenue, answer C, we wouldn't debit a revenue. That would, again, that would be a huge red flag, stick out like a, th a sore thumb, right? We know from our internal auditing that revenue accounts carry credit balances and debiting a revenue account, again, that would, you know, pop out and uh, would cause uh, anybody who is closely reviewing the information to check it out and find out why the revenue account was debited. Um, again, debiting another asset account, that's not helpful. Crediting the asset kind of on the same lines of answer B, bravo. So study tips. Choose the best study method for you. Do you want to study with a group? Do you want to, you know, hook up with a LinkedIn group or um, you know, a Facebook group? Do you want to study in a live classroom? Do you want to have other students, uh, you know, with you? Um, so choose the correct study method. Uh, again, the IIA CIM learning system is developed by professionals all around the globe and those that are very knowledgeable about the standards and guidance and the professional practice of internal auditing. So I'm a strong advocate for the IIA CIA learning system. You need to be realistic about your time commitment, um, both the duration and the number of hours per week that you're willing to commit to studying. Um, be honest with yourself. Again, calendar your study time. Proper prior planning prevents poor performance. You've got to do that assessment, understand where you are today, understand where you're going, and build your plan for success. Don't procrastinate. That's another key element. Even more so now with the new IIA Global Standards coming out. You want to get this done now. Don't procrastinate. Um, plan. Use your flashcards. Use your glossary. Focus on proficiency areas, those areas that are more technical. Uh, you want to focus on those areas. Don't focus on the basic stuff that's easy. I've had students come back and, you know, be excited because they're scoring 90 or 95 percent on their quizzes, um, but they're missing those technical topics, and they've got to focus on the tougher stuff. Um, so understand the application of the practice areas for internal audit professionals. Um, so you need to go beyond just memorization. Be prepared for what you're going to experience in the Pearson View exam environment. So it's a computer-based test format. Again, multiple choice questions, four answer options. Pay special attention to the International Professional Practices Framework. So that's where you find standards and guidance. It's where you find the definition of internal audit. It's where you find the mission statement for internal audit. This is where you find our 10 core principles and our code of ethics. All of that is encompassed in the International Professional Practices Framework, and you will be tested on more than just the standards. So look at the framework, okay? Um, just to test your understanding and your knowledge for parts one and part two, write an audit policy and procedure manual table of contents just from your memory and see if you can come up with a table of contents for a policy and procedure manual that's going to be comprehensive, um, just like maybe you're a new chief audit executive, uh, you know, in a small audit shop. What would that policy and procedure manual look like? What topics would be covered? And then, of course, consider your work experience and your real life experience. Um, test taking tips. If you see a very lengthy, verbose uh, question, read the last sentence with the question mark at the end of the sentence first, so that then you know what question is being asked. So read the very last sentence in the paragraph Anticipate your answer. See if the answer that you've anticipated is there out of the four answer choices. And then go back and read all of the information prior to the question. This is going to help you to focus on what is being asked, and it's going to give you an opportunity to read the question 
at least twice so that you don't get caught up in all the details and the background information. And I would say most of the CIA exam questions are, are fairly short, but every so often you will get a question that's, that's maybe five or six sentences long, okay? Uh, look for the qualifiers, the words like all, except for, not, most likely, least likely. Another clue is that if you see the word always, or you see the word never, those two words are extremes and probably not associated with the correct answer. Okay? Always and never, again, those are extremes and they're probably not going to be associated with the correct answer. Think about our profession. We're a global profession. We operate in many different cultures, many different regulatory environments and government structures, and the internal audit standards and guidance are principles-based, and they're built to be flexible. They're built to be adaptable to the environment in which they're practiced. So look for those clues. Think of your answer before you read the options. Answer broadly and globally, again, Think beyond your work experience and your specific industry. Eliminate the distractors, those answer choices that are obviously incorrect. Avoid analysis paralysis. Don't go there. Trust your first impressions. If you're unsure about an answer, answer the question anyway, but flag it so that you can circle back and review it later. If you don't choose an answer, you absolutely won't get the point. If you do choose an answer, you have a 25% chance of getting it correct. Budget your time, don't rush, develop a steady pace. Uh, and when you're working on your quizzes, discipline yourself to spend one minute per question and no more. Monitor your time with your, your mobile phone, with a you know, stopwatch, whatever, so that you are developing that rhythm as you're working through your questions. And this is going to allow you to build in a buffer of time at the end of all of your questions and give you a buffer to circle back to those that you flagged for later review. It's also going to allow you to manage your, your anxiety around your time. So it's going to help you to avoid the analysis paralysis so you're not hung up on a question. You know, if you're reaching that one minute mark, answer the question and move on. If you don't know it after one minute, you're probably not going to know the answer after 10 minutes. So move on. Be well rested, eat a good breakfast, be comfortable, wear comfortable clothing. And um, here's one more practice question. Determining engagement objectives have been met is ultimately the responsibility of who? This is a good question. We'll give you about 20 seconds on this one. Very good. A key word here is ultimately the responsibility. Whether the internal audit activity has three or four audit staff or it has three or 400 audit staff, the ultimate responsibility for everything in the internal audit function is the chief audit executive, like any other area of the business. If you're looking at a you know, finance and accounting area that has a number of accountants and controllers and so forth, the ultimate responsibility lies with the chief financial officer. The ultimate responsibility for everything that goes on in the organization is the chief executive officer. 
and then the board of directors, of course, and their oversight responsibilities. So here we have it. Um, the CAE is the business leader, ultimately responsible for everything that happens in internal audit. Okay. All righty. Well, Kelly, I'm going to turn it back over to you, and you can talk about our winner for today's program. Thank you all for your attention. Absolutely. Uh, thank you so much, Vicki, for sharing all those helpful exam and test-taking tips. I think that's very beneficial for our, our attendees today and also to Greg for the information that you shared on how to apply and uh, benefits of the CA exam itself. So we are going to do a drawing now, a random drawing of a person on the call that um, is going to win a free IA online e-seminar. You'll be able to pick part one, two, or three, whichever one you prefer. So I am going to do a random drawing right now. And our winner is Kenneth Ho. So congratulations, Kenneth. We will reach out to you directly and you may be able to choose which e-seminar course that you wish to attend. Um, I also have a special offer uh, for those on the uh, call today. We are offering 20% off the learning system and this will be available until August 25th. Also, if you have a friend or colleague that may be studying as well, please feel free to pass this uh, discount code along. Um, you can use this discount code at learncia.com and the code here is CIA823. Um, it will be again valid until August 25th and that will take 20% off the learning system materials that would apply to um, on top of the regular member discount. So for example, as an IA member, you already receive 100 US dollars off of the full learning system kit, which is parts one through three, and then it, you would get the 20% discount in addition to that. So there's a huge um, uh, value in becoming an IA member in addition to using this discount code. Um, we, Vicki talked a lot about the instructor-led courses available. Those are available online and in person. And if you go to learnci.com and click on courses, course listings or courses offered, you will find a full list of all of the courses around the globe um, offered there. And that's for those people who really prefer an instructor-led course versus self-studying. Uh, also to note, if you uh, take an instructor-led course, the self-study learning system materials that we just went over will be included in your course fee, so you would not need to buy those separately. Uh, so uh, just a few things um, before we wrap up. We have, again, the webinar discount code, CI823. If you have a team of people, we do have additional discounts available for groups of five or more. So I've listed my colleague Mike's information here. Uh, mike.downs at thei.org. You can contact Mike and he would be able to provide additional discounts for your team. And then also when you earn your CI certification, which I'm confident you will do, uh, just make sure that you maintain that certification with the CPEs and uh, keep in mind those changes uh, to the CPE that, are, that Greg mentioned earlier. Uh, if you would like a copy of these slides or you would like a recording of the webinar, also, we have some frequently asked questions posted. You may go to learncia.com backslash webinar dash archive and we'll provide a recording. Just give us a few days to get it up. Uh, we will also send an email out to um, with this link to this information and the discount code after the webinar here. Uh, but in case you want to access it on your own, you may go there at any time and access the slides and the recording. I know we've uh, had a lot of questions coming in in the background. We've been trying to answer as quickly as possible. If we did not get to your question today, I know we're at the top of the hour now, um, we will tr um, email you directly and try to get an answer to you for um, your question. So that brings us to the conclusion of today's broadcast. Again, many thanks to our presenters today for a great program. We are going to display a post-event survey to you. So if you are not able to see the survey, please go to the resources tab where you can locate the survey link. And again, if we're not able to get to your question, we will try to follow up with you directly. Thank you again for your time and attending today, and we hope you have a wonderful day.